One of the biggest UI changes coming to Android Q is gestural navigation. You may have already seen various gestures for navigation on some of our partners' devices. Android Q is supporting a new out-of-the-box navigation experience. Navigation gestures are supported as a new mode separate from the traditional three-button experience in the bottom nav bar. This lets your app use the entire screen, which provides a more immersive display experience. Android Q has gestures for going home and going back. Swiping up from the bottom edge takes the user to the home screen. Swiping inwards anywhere on the left or right edges takes the user back to the previous screen. With these two gestures, your app can take advantage of the valuable screen real estate on the bottom of the display. However, if your app uses gestures or has controls in the system gesture areas, it might create conflicts with the system-wide gestures. For example, if your app relies on gestures for sliders or draggable items in any of the system gesture areas, your users might accidentally trigger a navigation gesture. This results in a broken experience in your app. There are two gestural conflicts your app might encounter. The first conflict is with the swipe up gesture on the bottom edge of the screen, which takes the user to the home screen. You should avoid having any critical controls rely on vertical swipe gesture in the bottom parts of your app, because the home gesture is designed to be a reliable escape mechanism for users and will always get priority for touch events. Examples of UI conflicts with the home gesture are bottom draggable sheets or other swipe up to perform actions. To steer clear of the bottom swipe conflict, we added window insets that get mandatory system gesture insets, which returns all swipe recognition thresholds for the device. Using this information, apps can shift conflicting content from the edges of the screen. The second conflict is with the edge swipe gesture, which takes the user back. The system back gesture occupies the entire length of the left and right screen edges. So apps should make sure that key touch and motion functionality isn't stolen by system back gesture. Examples of interaction conflicts with the back gesture include drawers, sliders, sheets, and other controls which require a swipe or drag to perform an action. In order to handle touch events at the edges of the screen, apps can tell the system which areas they need to exclude from the back gesture with the new Gesture Exclusion Rex API in queue. If back gesture interferes with your app controls, use the Gesture Exclusion Rex API to create gesture exclusion zones for the controls that might be affected. On the other hand, do not disable the back gesture by creating a gesture exclusion zone which spans entire edge of the screen. This creates a broken, non-consistent behavior with the system and other apps. The new API is a part of the view class which expects a list of wrecked objects that represent gesture exclusion zones. This API lets your app intercept horizontal swipes only within the desired areas. The Gesture Exclusion Rects API call should be performed in the onLayout or onDraw methods of the view, as shown in this example. Drawer layout and SeekBar components already have this opt-out behavior built in, so no additional work is needed other than updating the Jetpack dependencies and or built against the new SDK respectively. And that's it! To ensure the best user experience, make sure the gestures in your app do not conflict with system-wide gestures. If they do, use System Gesture Exclusion Rex API to fix any problems before targeting your app to Android Q. If you are interested in gestural navigation, make sure you also watch the Edge to Edge Dev Byte, which is linked in the notes below. Thank you for watching! Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome Android videos. See you next time!